वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम ओजस्वी भल्ला रिसर्च स्कॉलर एट जवाहरलाल नेहरू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आई एम प्रजेंटिंग टूडे ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ प्रोफेसर जयसील इन टूडे आई एल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट मॉड्यूल नंबर सिक्सटीन ऑफ द पेपर एडवांस्ड सिंटैक्स टाइटल्ड मिनिमलिस्ट इंक्वायरीज टू द फेस थ्यूरी इन दिस मॉड्यूल आफ्टर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग टू यू what this module is about i'll be talking about convergence phase and then summarizing it this will be a short module so in this lesson we look at another innovation that chomsky introduced in his 1998 2000 paper minimalist inquiries namely phases so the basic theme which is in the background of this innovation is how long do we wait before we decide whether a derivation converges or crashes do we wait for the whole derivation to complete or is it okay that after small chunks of derivation in the course of building up of the derivation we decide that is as soon as each chunk is finished saving up on derivational memory is the motivation for our inclination towards the later mechanism that is it's after a small chunk is completed we decide whether the derivation converges or crashes we can see application in derivation of a sentence our example sentence is john loves mary so we start the derivation of this sentence by merging the verb and its direct object you see the structure in two on your screen where dp mary gets merged with big v head to give us the sweepy now can this chunk converge the answer is no because the mary the dp mary has unspecified case feature which must be marked accusative case by little v so there is an unspecified case feature in it which stops it from converging so we do the next merge you see the next merge in structure 3 on your screen where we have merged little v head to the big vp and also merged to the subject john in the specify position of little v we get this structure now little v marks mary as plus accusative and little v then adjoins to big v you can see in the screen that mary has been marked plus accusative and our big v has left a trace behind and head adjoined to the little v now little vp is still not convergent because the subject dp has unspecified case feature also because big v and little v this verbal complex must trace to t and get its inflection but it can be seen that the big vp part the part below the arc that i have drawn is convergent because now it has no element which is needy of feature checking and there is no uninterpretable feature left in it thus this little vp is convergent for a theory this chunk of structure can now be spelled out that is it can be sent to the phonological component this chunk can also be interpreted that is it can be sent to the semantic component now phase theory claims that a derivation can be spelled out and interpreted in chunks once a chunk is spelled out and interpreted derivation can forget about it because there is no need to keep it in in its active memory this effects a great saving in the derivational memory part now when we talk about phase it is clear that it was only after we built up the whole of little vp that we could decide that big vp which was the complement of little v could be spelled out and interpreted so we say little vp is a phase a phase can be defined as a stage in derivation where we take stock and decide what part is complete in derivation and can be sent forward for spell out and interpretation and then derivation can forget about this part little vp and cp are the phases we saw evidence for little vp being a phase let us now see evidence for cp being a phase in the example sentence john loves mary little vp doesn't converge yet because subject dp has unfilled case feature and verb has to get inflection 
So we next merge T head to the little VP head and we get the structure as it is on your screen. In this structure you can see that our already the big V which had it joined to little v now this complex moves further up and it joins to T to give us love plus T specified there our subject which is occurring in the specified position of little vp now moves up to specified position of tp leaving a trace behind we have raised little v plus big v and it joined it to t and we have also raised subject to the specified position of tp now finite t sends its probe of pi feature and marks subject as nominative this fulfills subject dp's requirement of case T has EPP feature in it which gets deleted when the subject moves to spec TP and fills it. T also has uninterpretable plus V feature which gets deleted when verb adjoins to it. Thus our TP now has no remaining uninterpretable feature on it and now TP converges. So why don't we call TP a phase rather we call CP a phase. To see evidence for it, let us see data from WH movement. Our sentence is, whom does John love? For this, the structure is drawn in two, where we have who originating as DP under VP, the complement of V. This V has moved and headed joint to little v. And we have subject John originating in the specified position of little vp. Now our object dp gets its case feature satisfied plus accusative from the probe of little v. But our object tp has now an uninterpretable plus wh feature. In fact, all wh phrases have uninterpretable plus wh feature. This feature gets deleted only when it is in the specified position of an, inter of an interrogative c head. An interrogative c head has an uninterpretable plus q feature which gets deleted when a wh phrase moves into it. So vp of previous sentence could not have been spelt out or interpreted as it still had an uninterpretable feature that was of plus wh on this object wh. So do we wait for the whole cp to be built up to spell out a chunk? It's nice to see that we could have infinitely long WH movement in cases like whom do you believe that Peter thinks that John loves. So it could take a lot of time for us to actually spell out one part if we wait for the whole CP to be built up. Chomsky proposed a solution to it and said that as soon as a phase is completed, a WH phrase moves to the edge of the phrase. This repeats until the plus WH feature gets deleted that is, until the WH phrase reaches the spec of interrogative C. You can see this happening on the structure on your screen. So now our WH element who, which was the object DP under VP, gets moved to a higher specified position of little VP. This is the edge of the phase of little VP. After movement of WH phrase to the edge of little VP, now big VP contains no uninterpretable feature and this chunk can be spelled out and interpreted. Now when a finite T head takes such a little VP as complement, it can't converge as now TP has this offending plus WH feature of the WH phrase. So we merge the C head next. WH phrase moves up a second time to specifier of CP where the uninterpretable feature gets checked and deleted. Only when, only it is now that the TP converges. You can see the structure for it on your screen. Who, which originated from the object position under love, raises up first to the edge of the little VP and raises further up to the edge of CP. So now from this structure it can be seen that because of phase theoretical requirement of converge as soon as possible, even such a simple interrogative sentence has WH movement happening in two steps. So now to summarize this module, we have established 
that CP and little vp are phases. As soon as a phase is completed, complement of the head of the phrase, that is, complement of C head or complement of little v, is sent for spell out and interpretation. Another important technology that came ahead was the phase impenetrability condition PIC. PIC stated that at the completion of a phase, the complement of the head of the phase is inaccessible to all syntactic operations such as extraction, that would be movement, and feature checking. An important consequence of the phase impenetrability condition came that if a phase has a WH phrase in it, this WH phrase must move to the edge of the phase before this phase gets completed. Otherwise, this WH phrase will be frozen in place inside the phase and the derivation will crash. In this, we saw the technology of phases being built up, all thanks to the innovations that started from Chomsky's 1998-2000 paper called Minimalist Inquiries. And now onwards, our derivation did not have to complete for it to be sending its components to LF and PF. Rather, now we could have chunks of derivation which were convergent, which did not have any uninterpretable features, which did not need anything more to be sent forward to LF and PF component. And then our derivation resumed ahead after it. Because of this, derivational memory was saved in our computational mechanism. Thank you.